Have you ever wondered why God allowed this disappointment in your life? The God we serve uses our pain to train for greatness. Join Dr. Michelle Corral this Sunday at 7 p.m. at the Breath of the Spirit Prophetic Word Center. Let God's Word direct you into your highest predestined purpose. That's this Sunday at 7 p.m. at the Breath of the Spirit Prophetic Word Center, 23705 Via Del Rio in your Belinda. Connect with Dr. Corral on Facebook. atonement he could not do it because why because of the blood all right because 10 is a blood number it is an atonement number 10,000 talents of silver now I want to go a little bit deeper on this so you and I can understand the scripture already has promised that that uh, God has already given us his guarantee that all of the promises in the book of Esther are ours, and we're going to see it because it is prophetically prefigured through the atonement. The atonement is God's guarantee that the blood has already bought it. All right? So let us look now at Exodus chapter 30. And I want you to see in Exodus chapter 30, Haman offered 10,000 talents of silver. What does silver represent? And I want you to see that shekels of silver, 10,000 talents of silver came in the form of shekels. All right? Uh, 10,000 talents represented shekels, but pounds of shekels. In today's um, monetary value, the um, 10,000 talents of silver would be approximately $96 million, all right, that he was willing to pay for the Jewish people and their genocide, all right? And we also need to see that, that the national budget of the nation of Israel, of the uh, nation of Persia at the time was 15,000 talents, so he is actually almost meeting the entire budget for the entire year for Persia that he's going to pay off to cause the Jewish people to be exterminated. But I want you to know something. God has already got their back before the attack. Put your hands up and say the blood has already covered it. God's already got my back before the attack. Say this with me. The blood covers it all. All right. So let's look here in Exodus chapter 30, verse 11. The Bible says, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, When you take the sum of the children of Israel after the number, when they shall give every man a ransom for his soul unto the Lord, then when you number them, that there shall be no plague among them when you number them. Now, just to kind of uh, explain what's going on here, we need to understand that when the children of Israel went out to war, they had to be numbered. But they could not be numbered without a half a shekel of silver over their head. God commanded you cannot take a number unless there's a half a shekel of silver. So what you would do is you would not number the human being without the shekel of silver. Instead, the... Um, substitute for the numbers would be a half a shekel of silver. Why? Because silver represented that they were already ransomed and silver represented they were already bought. Silver represented that they were protected. I hope you understand something. Say this with me. I'm already covered in the battle. I'm already ransomed in the battle. I've already been purchased by the blood. All right. 
Now we need to also see that here in Exodus 30, there are three different similitudes that are used for shekels, all right? And they all explain atonement concealed, Calvary revealed. The first word that is used in substitute for the shekels is the word ransom. Ransom means something that's been paid for. It's a, it's a price exchange. It's an exchange for a life or it's a price for a life. All right. So if we look at verse 12, instead of using the word shekels, it's used, the word used here is ransom. Then we see the word shekel actually used. In verse 13, the Bible says, everyone that passes among them um, shall give a half a shekel of, of silver after the shekel of the sanctuary. It was an offering unto the Lord. So here we see shekel and ransom is the same. All right. Then we're also going to see, beloved people, uh, that it is also referred to as atonement. Let's go down to verse, verse uh, 16. And we're going to see verse 16 here. And the scripture says, and you shall take the atonement money. Notice the word here is no longer ransom, but it is atonement. You shall take the atonement money of the children of Israel. So say this with me. The shekels, the shekels of silver represent atonement. The, rec the shekels of silver represent ransom. Say it with me, ransom and silver. All right. So he says here, you shall take the atonement money of the children of Israel. And the scripture says that it may be a memorial unto the children of Israel, um, unto the Lord to make an atonement for your souls. We need to understand that God had already ordered in the month of Adar, the, the month of Adar, on the 15th day of the month of Adar, shekels were taken. It, the announcement was made on the first day of Adar to all the people that there will be a half a shekel of silver throughout Israel collected by every person, and it would be laid up before the Lord in the tabernacle as a memorial unto the Lord. So the month of Adar was the month of the shekels. It was the month that all of Israel brought the shekels to the Lord and laid it up in the tabernacle, which served as an atonement and served as a ransom, meaning every soul was already purchased, every soul was already ransomed, and every soul had a blood covering over it. Can I get a witness somewhere? All right, so here we need to see that it is a type and a shadow because atonement here is not just the shekels, but it is a prophetic prefiguring of the work of Calvary. The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 and 16, that Jesus Christ was betrayed and he was sold for our ransom that we might be purchased for 30 pieces of silver. So here we are seeing types and shadows in the book of Esther, atonement concealed but Calvary revealed. Let us look at Zechariah chapter 11 and look at verse 12. And I said to them, if you think good, give me my prize. And if not, forbear. So they weighed for my prize 30 pieces of silver. And the Lord said to me, cast it under the potter, a goodly price it was prized of them. And I took the 30 pieces of silver and cast them to the potter in the house of the Lord. So this was the price and fulfilled in the New Testament where we see in Matthew 25 that Jesus was betrayed for 30 pieces of silver. So here we see, now that, that those shkalim that were brought into the tabernacle were put in the tabernacle as a memorial before the Lord. So that when the Lord looked upon those shkalim, when he saw those shekels, it had to remind him of something. Okay, we see all throughout the scripture that when there are certain signs that God commanded, signs of atonement, 
For example, we are going to see the same signs of atonement on the day that, es that um, Haman wrote the death decree against the Jewish people. These are signs. These are types and shadows. This is what I call blood evidence that we find throughout the scripture that produces the proof of the return of our loss through the power of the cross. Let's look beloved saints, at the very day in Esther chapter 3. And the Bible says, then were the scribes called on the 13th day of the first month. Now, I want you to understand what's going on here. First of all, Haman offers 10,000 talents of silver. 10 is the number of atonement. The Bible says in the 10th day of the seventh month, you shall have a day of atonement. We read in Leviticus chapter 25, verse 9, that you shall cause the trumpet of Jubilee to sound throughout the land. Verse 10, the last line says, and you will return every man to his family and every man to his possession. So through atonement, there is the return of family. There was the return of the lost. There was the return of the property. There is the return of everything that the devil has stolen. There is return of the promises. Somebody ought to say through the, through the blood, I have God's guarantee that what the enemy has stolen from my life is going to be returned. All right, now I want you to see another uh, miraculous messianic miracle that we see here in the book of Esther. We see the date that the death decree was written. And I want you to understand that the date that the death decree was written was not written by accident. It was written on the 13th day of the first month, which is the night before Passover. All right. And it was written this way on purpose because as soon as it was written, I want you to know on the 13th day of the first month at sundown, it becomes Passover. That means that Passover is the day when the death angel was released throughout the land of Egypt. And God said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague will not be upon you to destroy you in the houses where you are. So the first thing you need to see is that it was not a coincidence. We see all throughout the book of Esther what looks like a coincidence, but it is actually the power of divine providence. In the book of Esther, God chooses to work his miracles through what looks like coincidence because it is the hidden hand of heaven maneuvering the events to happen during the time that looks like a coincidence. And the reason this is being done is because the entire ideology of Amalek, and we know that Haman was an Amalekite. The Bible says in Esther chapter 3 verse 1, then Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, Agag was the king of the Amalekites, and Agag was of the royal, the royal king, and Haman was a descendant of King Agag, meaning he is an Amalekite. So we need to understand why God is allowing his miracles to be hidden behind what looks like coincidence. You see, it's not an open miracle like the book of Exodus, where we see a Red Sea split, where we see plagues come down, where we see fiery, um, fiery signs from heaven. They look very subtle, but they're hidden. And this is how God is going to fight Amalek. Why? Because the ideology of Amalek is chance and luck. This is why Haman cast purr against the children of Israel. But we need to understand that God is going to not allow the ideology of coincidence to rule. What we need to understand here, dear people of God, is that God's divine providence is going to call everything forth in Jesus' name. So let us look right now in Jesus' name at what is going on here. We are seeing here the Bible tells us, and the king's scribes were called on the 13th day of the first month. Let's go over to Exodus chapter 14. So, or excuse me, Exodus chapter 12. Now, I want you to see something because, first of all, 
the Bible is showing us that the entire chapter of Exodus 12 begins with what is called the beginning of months. And this is so very important because in the beginning of months, on the very day where God said, this shall be the beginning of months to you, it is the first month of the year to you, this is when Haman cast, cast the purr. The day that he decided to cast the purr was the first day of the first month. Touch your neighbor and say, wrong time. Say he should have cast purr another time, but this is a time of destiny. God's already got their back before the attack. All right. So here we are seeing, the Bible says in verse 2, this shall be the beginning of months to you. It is the first month of the year to you. So this means new beginning. This means a new time. God set this up because he said, when you come out of Egypt, it's going to be completely different. You're going to have a whole new life. You're going to have a calendar now that is designed by destiny. It is a calendar by divine design that's going to bring you to the promised land. That's going to bring you into all that God has prepared for you. All right. And now we're going to also see that God is commanding in verse 3. Speak to the children of Israel saying in the 10th day of this month. They shall take every man a lamb. Notice how it's the 10th day. Because the lambs had to be consecrated and separated. Before they were offered on the 14th day of Passover. The 10th day, they had to be separated because 10 is a number of atonement. Say it with me. 10 is the number of atonement. So the lambs were separated. The lambs were consecrated and set aside for God's, uh, to, for God's sacrifice. And here we're going to see. The Bible tells us in verse 6. And you shall keep it unto the 14th day of the first month. For the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel, and they shall kill it in the evening. So here we are seeing that the Passover lambs were slain on the 14th day of the first month. Haman set out the death decree. He wrote it on the 13th day of the first month. But they were sent by, um, by carriers, by dromedaries on posts to be nailed to posts throughout the empire on the 14th day of the first month. So God already had a remedy of reversal. Touch your neighbor and say, God's already got a remedy of reversal through the power of the blood of Jesus. And the remedy of reversal, Haman chose the wrong day to cast the purr, and Haman chose the wrong day to write the death decree. Somebody ought to say, God's going to turn it around. All right, so the very day that God told the children of Israel, you're going to kill the lambs and you're going to apply the lambs to the doorpost, the blood of the lamb to every doorpost, was the very day that Haman sent out all of the letters and nailed them to posts throughout the kingdom. But God says, I've already got that covered. I've already got a blood remedy. It's already going into reverse because I've got their back before the attack. Because why? All throughout the book of Esther, every divine reversal is atonement concealed and Calvary revealed. Can I get a witness somewhere? Say this with me, the death decree was already covered by the blood. Now watch this in Exodus chapter 12. He said in verse 7, they shall take the blood and strike it on the two sides of the post of the upper doorpost of the houses, wherein they shall eat it. So here we see uh, going back up into verse 6, you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. That means the lamb that was separated on the 10th day because 10 represents atonement. You shall kill it in the 14th day of that same month and you shall kill it in the evening. It actually reads between the evenings in Hebrew, which is 3 o'clock our time. And then the scripture says, and they shall take the blood and strike it on the two sides of the post, meaning now comparing it to what's happening, Haman writes the death decree with the king's ring 
on the 13th day of the month of Nisan, the day before Passover. He sends out the dromedaries on Passover, on Passover, all throughout the entire kingdom of King Ahasuerus. It's being nailed to trees, which is a type of doorpost. You're being nailed. The writing is being nailed. But touch your neighbor and say the death decree was already abolished by the blood. The blood has already covered it. This is why the Bible says that the blood had to be applied to the post because the death decree was on the post. It was on the post. It was on the trees. It was wherever there was root wood. The death decree was nailed to it. But I want you to know that the Bible tells us in the book of Colossians, the second chapter and the 14th verse, that he has blotted out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, putting it out of the way. Somebody ought to say amen. So here we see these types and shadows. And I want you to understand how, how these types and shadows of Calvary are our guarantee that God is going to reverse the curse. Now, beloved people, I want to show you a third. First, I've shown you atonement through the shkalim. I've shown you atonement through the silver shekels that that Haman wanted to purchase Israel, but it was already covered through the blood, laid up as a memorial in the temple, so that when God looked at those 10,000 talents that were laid up, I want you to understand the price that Haman was going to pay for Israel was the exact price of every 600,000 of those half shekels of silver that were collected equals the 10,000 talents that Haman was going to pay. So God says, I've already got it covered. It was already laid up in the tabernacle. And when God sees it, he remembers something. He doesn't just remember the offering that was taken in the wilderness. When he looks at the shekels, he said it's going to be laid up for a memorial. He is looking and remembering that Jesus Christ was already going to go to the cross of Calvary and on the basis of Jesus going to Calvary, I want you to know that Israel was covered. Can somebody give me a witness here today? Say this with me. God's already got our back before the attack because of the blood of Jesus. So we see it in the Shkalim. We also see it in the 13th day of, of, of the month of Nisan. We see that the posts were um, nailed and the death decree was sent out by the dromedaries throughout the entire empire on Passover. Nailed, the death decree was written, but God says I've already got that covered because on the 14th day of Nisan, on all the posts throughout every house in Israel, the death angel could not pat, could not kill any of the children of Israel, just like this death decree has no power over my children, because when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you in the houses where you are. When I smite the land of Egypt, somebody ought to give God the praise and give God the glory. Now I'm going to show you the third the third atonement, supernatural similitude hidden in the book of Esther. And that is going to be through the very words hung on a tree. And I want you to understand, in the book of Esther, there is a King James mistranslation that needs to be rectified as we're speaking because throughout the book of Esther, we're going to see that the words hanged on the gallows are used. We're going to see in Esther chapter 5, uh, the Bible tells us, or actually Esther chapter 7. In Esther chapter 7, Haman is given the sentence to be hung on the gallows. Then we see in Esther chapter 9, the 10 sons of Haman are hung on on the gallows. And in Esther chapter 2, verse 23, the Bible tells us that Big Dan and Teresh, who plotted the king's assassination, were hanged on a tree. So the question is, what is it? Hanged on a tree 
or hanged on the gallows. I want you to understand hanged on the gallows is King James language. And it actually is a mistranslation from the original Hebrew. The original Hebrew says hanged on a tree. So I want you to understand that Big Dan and Teresh were hanged on a tree. I want you to understand that Haman was hanged on a tree. And the ten sons of Haman were hanged on a tree. So you might say, what type of spiritual significance is that to us? First of all, I want you to understand the way they were hung was not choked. They were killed first and then hung. All right. They were not choked on a tree. They were hung on a tree. Why were they hung on a tree? They were hung on a tree for open display to show that this is what happens to someone who is cursed. This is what happens to something that is cursed. So they're killed first. They're not choked and hung on the tree. They're killed first and then hung on a tree. I want you to understand something about Haman. The death of Haman did not take 12 months to accomplish. The 10 sons of Haman were killed in the, were, were, were hung on the tree on the 13th day of the month of Adar, the day the death decree should have been put into execution. But I want you to understand Haman was hung on the tree three days after he wrote the death decree. Okay, he wrote the death decree on the 13th day of the month of Nisan. And by the 17th day of the month of Nisan, he was already dead. So here you see three days and here you see death on a tree. Somebody ought to say three days, death on a tree. Say this with me, three days, death on the tree caused every curse to go into reverse, caused every principality to come down, caused every stronghold to come down, caused every curse to be broken, to be changed, to be obliterated. Somebody ought to say tonight, God is about to break the strongholds off of my life and the curse is about to go in reverse because I've got a blood-bought guarantee. I've got the guarantee that the blood of Jesus has already paid the price for every stronghold, principality, every power, every spiritual wickedness, every demonic spirit, every witchcraft, every hex, every vex, every spirit that wants to destroy you, every genocidal act towards your destiny, every wicked plot, every device, every witchcraft that has come up against you has already been bought by the blood of Jesus. And somebody ought to say amen. God allowed this disappointment in your life? The God we serve uses our pain to train for greatness. Join Dr. Michelle Corral this Sunday at 7 p.m. at the Breath of the Spirit Prophetic Word Center. Let God's Word direct you into your highest predestined purpose. That's this Sunday at 7 p.m. at the Breath of the Spirit Prophetic Word Center, 23705 Via Del Rio in your Belinda. Connect with Dr. Corral on Facebook.